Hello and welcome, I'm Robert Anderson. In this video, I'm going to show you what it actually takes to beat anxiety and nerves in your sport. So, you've got to identify, have you got anxiety, first of all? It's obviously a condition, and it's a build-up of fears, it's a fear of the future, what might happen? What's the worst can happen? What can I catastrophize about? And as an athlete, what will happen if I get beat? What will happen if I don't play well? What will that say about me? What will that, the people watching me think about me? Will they be laughing at me? Okay, so that's what's going on in your head. That's where the anxiety comes from. And if you've got that going on, how can you perform to your best? It's no wonder you're full of nerves. So you'll be scrutinizing your every, every play, every shot. Okay, you'll be scrutinizing everything. Then your body tenses up and you're not relaxed. And then when you're not relaxed, of course you can't, you know, play to the best of your ability. You need to be relaxed and confident. And you're not confident because confidence is trust. So you can't trust yourself to deliver. And, yeah, and you know you can deliver because you've been doing it in practice. You've been doing it in training. And you've done it before so you, there is evidence to the contrary uh, of the anxiety but somehow you still feel it so even consciously you know this is silly why am i like this you know i'm different than other people you start to question yourself you start to question your own sanity you think you've got the stigma of having a mental health condition and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all but it's something that needs to be dealt with. You can't bury your head in the sand. You can't ignore it. It just won't go away by itself. And you know, and as I said, the breath breathing techniques will help with that, hundred percent. Um, they'll help you. You know, whenever you're going out to compete, so it'll definitely help. But it's still there. And here, here's an analogy that I heard the other day. You know, you can't put a filling on a rotting tooth. You've got to get the cavity out. And the anxiety is a cavity. Okay, so there's no point in filling it with self-talk or mindfulness or meditation. You've got to get rid of the decay. And that's the anxiety. To do that, you'll be less nervous. And then you can let all these other things help you all those techniques and strategies they they will help then it's too much at the moment so get rid of the anxiety how do you do that well the anxiety is really a thought process in your head it's a mental construct that your mind is constructed for you on your behalf and it's done that because at some stage in your life it hasn't felt like you were safe. And your mind just wants to keep you safe. That's our primal instincts, to stay safe, to survive. And even you know, though you might think that's nothing to do with your sport right now, your mind doesn't care if you're playing sport or you're out hunting or you're out in war. Okay? It just wants you to survive no matter what. So it doesn't, you know, rationalize all these things. It's not conscious. Um, it's not logical. It just wants you to survive and keep you safe. And it doesn't also care how you feel. Because if you don't feel safe or your mind assumes an environment's not safe you're going to get the same feelings so what does not feeling safe feel like what does fear feel like so think of those feelings in your body when you don't feel safe when you feel afraid your heart rate goes up your muscles tense your breathing gets shallower Your throat might swell up a little bit. 
you start to sweat your palms of your hands start to sweat and this is anxiety so anxiety comes from fear not from a fear of you trying to play your sport that's and that's thinking about it logically again consciously you just need to understand your subconscious mind what it's trying to do for you it's trying to keep you safe it doesn't care how it does it it's just the end result that matters and the way it can do it is through feelings emotions and that's why you get emotional on a tennis court so you've had experiences in your past probably your childhood where you haven't felt safe we've all felt that maybe there was bullies or there was an, you nearly had an accident or you, or you witnessed an accident or you witnessed a fight your mind just perceived threat danger gives you feelings of fear and then your mind fast forward to a situation where there's some pressure involved perceived threat which is competition okay you against some someone else there's perceived threat so that, that's all it needs. That's the stimuli your mind needs to say, here, have some of this emotion. And, and it's too much emotion. It's not just a little bit. It's here, have all this emotion. Let's, uh, let's turn the power on here and let you feel this. Then your body starts to recreate the original feelings of danger, fear. And then you can't understand, you know, I'm only playing a tennis match or a football game or a basketball match. And you know, I'm starting to freeze, I'm starting the fight, flight, or freeze. It's all starting to kick in. Now you're getting confused, frustrated. I've done this in practice. Why is it? It's, it's the intensity of the occasion. There's something at stake. In practice, you're quite you're more laid back, you're relaxed. It's practice, there's not, not that much at stake. Even if you try to, your coach tries to recreate a, a competitive. Um, training environment which is great but it's not like the real thing because you've got crowds watching you might have television watching and media and that's just adding more pressure that's more of that environment that threat environment so you really gotta work with a specialist that can untie um, and deconstruct this mental construct that's in your head and they can do it because if it, if it was built up in your head, it can be deconstructed with a trained professional. So you've got to find a trained professional that understands your subconscious mind. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking there's a bit of a stigma around things like hypnosis or the subconscious mind. I think it's a bit out there. But if you want to Get rid of your anxiety, control your nerves, and beat your opponents who aren't dealing with this on the subconscious level. This is going to give you one hell of an advantage over your competitors. So talk to someone. You don't need to commit to doing anything. Talk to someone. You know, get well informed. It's not about being controlled, it's about being in control of yourself, your thoughts. So wouldn't you like to be in control of your own mind? You know, we have people like politicians trying to control our mind, filling us with propaganda spin. You've got media trying to do it. You've got marketing trying to control you to buy stuff, algorithms. So take, take control of it yourself. Take control of your own mind, you know, take control of your own, own algorithm. Take control of what goes in there, what you understand about yourself. So talk to someone that knows what they're talking about. Talk to several people, not just one person. Get a 360 perspective on it and make a well-informed decision because it could be the best decision you've ever made to work on your anxiety. Take control of your mind, control your nerves, then use this self-talk Use the breathing, highly beneficial.
meditation is great too but deal with the cavity first don't put the filling over the cavity deal with the cavity thanks for watching if you like this video there's another one coming up here um please subscribe i really appreciate it and please like the video and leave comments too thanks for watching i'm robert anderson